Hello everyone. Um, welcome to our watercolor project for the week. I have a reference image for you, a stock photo from the service that I subscribe to. It is this, okay? So you'll have a copy of this. I don't need to show this in the screen. You can look at your own. But we're gonna paint this and we're gonna do it a few times because what I want to do um, is take an, a subject that I am really attracted to in this moment and try it out in a few different ways. And that is something that we should all learn to do, right? Um, not just do sort of a step-by-step -step thing, but sort of push the boundaries and try different ways of approaching a subject. So we're gonna do some line and wash. So in other words, we're gonna draw it with a pen and then fill it in with loose watercolor. And we're gonna try it a la prima, just um, painting it directly from the photograph onto our page. Um, and I might, I might do it one extra time, whichever way is my favorite. I might do it one extra time just to see if I improve. So my suggestion, my suggestion is that you do this project at least three times. All right, so whatever that means, um, three times. Now, as far as materials, Try to get my iPad plugged in. As far as materials go, I've got a couple things here. I, I'm going to use student grade stuff. I've got some um, a watercolor postcard. I've got Canson XL. That was a failure that I did. I was trying to do something and it didn't work. Um, so I've got the Canson XL. And let me just take this out of here. Okay. And I've got a watercolor postcard. And I, you know, I don't want to use my best materials for this. I also have a pith sketchbook if I want to try it in there. Um, okay, as far as paint goes, I'm going to use my Winsor Newton paints because I feel like using those today. But you could use any paints, any paints at all. It does not matter what you have. Um, you can approximate the colors that you see, or you can use entirely new colors. That is up to you, the artist. I'm not sure what I'll do. Maybe I'll do a bit of both. But the, the key factor is, is that I'm inspired by this. It's pretty, it's something I wanna look at and spend time with today. And so I'm gonna use my watercolors and my time to paint it. I hope that makes sense. All right, I'm gonna put my paint this way. So I've got a little bit of a mixing area. I've got paper towels here, I've got water. I've got a pencil if I need it. Um, I've got a whole bunch of brushes. So whatever feels right is what I'll use. And let's see. I'm gonna find a pen. Oh, come on, it's just not working. I got a new cord and it's not working either. Okay. No, did it again? It's like, okay, there. If I don't touch it, maybe it'll be all right. Um, I'm going to use my micron pen, which is, which is this fountain pen. It's just more, um, I don't have to, I don't have to redo it. <laughs> um, I just put new ink in it and it works again. So, but I haven't used it in a couple days. And when that happens, I have to dip it in water and just get the ink flowing again because um, it's, a, it's a needle point nib, which means it's as fine as a zero three. Between, it's like between a zero three and a zero, a zero zero three and a zero zero five micron. So let me just see if I can get this writing. And it, if you don't use this pen every day, sometimes more than once a day, the ink stops flowing. And that's my only complaint about it, otherwise it is delightful to use. Well, I got plenty of ink in there. Okay, All right, so the I'll ink come back that I put in my pen is Datramentus Document Ink Black. I find it a little bit, I got it working, um, a little bit easier to work with than the Platinum Carbon Ink. Um, and it's perfectly waterproof once it dries. So I like this one, um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start with the, the card and use this first. So, so what I wanna do is I wanna make the fewest lines possible. Um, and 
draw what I see, right? And I, I'm not that concerned if, um, if my lines overcross each other or, you know, it, I want it to look sketchy and loose. And so where do I begin? I, I think I begin with the, with the ellipse of the glass, right? And there's a, um, something like that. And then this one kind of comes back in here. And then it's very, where I see very little, um, I can just skip. I don't have to use the pen all the time. I can use the pen heavier where I see the line is darker. Um, okay, so I've just got a basic glass shape there. And then I'm going to start with my flowers. And so I see this one kind of coming out this way. I really like that. Um, and I just want to be relaxed. I, I don't, I don't want to make it, um, too much of a, an ordeal. This one just kind of has one that goes down. So we've got some stems coming down and they certainly come down into the glass. So I can make them come down in the glass. And some of these you'll notice are not in focus and that's fine. Um, mine are gonna be in focus. The photo, this is a photograph I'm I'm doing it like my eyes would see it. So you can do it out of focus if you want, or you can do it in focus. Okay, and there's a little something there. I'm not gonna worry about that. So this cornflower is, here. I'm not even really looking at my paper. I'm just sort of looking. And I see like a stem leaf that comes up. There, and then here's another. Then I've got um, got one up here. And then I've got a clover. And I'm gonna make the clover about here. And I've just got all these little, I can't see it too clearly, but I know that it's just all these little
cloverish things. It's got sepals that come down. And there. And then I've got one up here in the front. And again, remember, we're just doing it very, sketchy. Almost like you could do it with your, your opposite hand, your non-dominant hand, and it would be fine. Now, at the bottom of the glass, we've also got some shapes happening, right? So we know that um, there's a back to that, but we're not going to put too much of that in there. And I might put one more um, daisy. Just make sure you give each of them a stem. Okay, so super sketchy and simple. Now we wanna let this dry for just a minute before we put our ink on. Um, we could start over here, that's fine. Now let me just, I'm gonna clean off my palette just a little bit. These colors are, I can save that green. I can use that. Uh, I want to clean off everything else a little bit so I have fresh, a fresh space. Not too, don't clean it up too well because it's always good to have a little bit of palette mud mixed in with your other colors, unless you are someone who just loves the clear, bright colors. And that's good too. All right, so let's get some yellow happening. I'm going to use my, my yellow is really dirty. That we don't want either because our yellow will be green. So we've got some of that bright yellow, um, that's Indian yellow, and I'm going to mix it with some lemon yellow to just give me that bright yellow. And then I can take a little bit of violet over here um, to get some dirtier yellow for those shadows. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint the insides of my daisies. and. Notice how I'm just putting the paint on, all right, wherever I see those. I am not concerned about staying in the lines. All right, so I've got the yellow one, then I take some of the darker yellow, and I'm just gonna touch it to the bottom where I see the shadow happening. And that just gives it a little bit of dimension, okay? but. Most important thing is that bright yellow, make sure that there's plenty of that. Now, for the petals, we're gonna leave them pretty much white, but we might wanna put just a tiny bit of gray in them. So I've got some gray here on my palette. You can use any gray. And where I see a little darkness, I might, um, on my, um, Petals, I might put a little bit. We want to leave it mostly light, okay? But if some of the petals have a little bit of gray on them, just add it in. Okay, just a little bit like that. And we'll put our stems in at the last minute. Okay, so that's really all we need to do for the daisies until we put the stems in. Now, cornflower blue, to me, is just pure cobalt. Um, it is so pretty. And then once we get that in, we'll add a little bit of pink to it, uh, like Quinn Rose, and then that will give us 
our, our other color. So I'm gonna put in that clear cobalt blue and make sure I kind of maintain the shape of this lovely flower. It's kind of spiky and sparse. All right, then I'm gonna take a little bit of pink, like quinacridone rose, and add it in just a little bit to get it to turn violet. All right, and then the center part, the center part is more violet. Need a little bit more. Get a little bit of violet happening there, and then we can pull up a little bit of violet here and there. Our clover is pretty much Quinn Rose with a little blue in it. And on the paler side, so you can really water it down. And I'm not, I'm not being crazy about this, right? I'm just gonna go in, use the tip of my brush to put in this clover color. Keep it kind of staccato, just like the petals are. And then I'm gonna go darker with it so I can take some of my green on my palette, add it in, and add that darker color to where it's darker just to give it some dimension. Now before I put my greens in, I'm gonna let this rest for a minute, okay? And then once we put our greens in, we'll let that rest for a minute and then we'll go back and we'll, we'll paint our glass and the shadow under the glass. So let's let this dry for just a minute. Okay, so let's mix up some green. Um, I'm, I had some green on my palette, so I left it. I'm just gonna wake that up. And I'm just gonna take some sap green and just enliven it a little bit. Or you could take some blue, blue and yellow. I might even add a little bit of the cobalt in there because we used it in our painting. All right. Now I've got this nice green, sort of a mid-green, okay? And I'm gonna paint the places that are green. So here. I'm gonna run it down my stems. Okay, and do not fret about the lines, right? We're just we're just following the lines and and putting some green down. Remember, we want this really loose and sketchy, almost like we could have done it um, with our non-dominant hand. And I don't even really need to do darker greens or whatever. The, the black that's in there from the ink is, is doing enough. Okay, so I want to let this rest again because next thing we're going to paint the glass and we don't want any of this paint to run into the glass. We want it to be sort of its own color. So I like painting this way because I can just take little breaks, right? Um, and it's kind of fun. I want to put a little bit more of that dark color there. All right. You can do this in five minute increments throughout your day. Just leave it out and come back and add a little more. All right, I'll be back when it dries. Okay, so let's do our glass and shadow. Now, don't stress about the glass, right? That's the main thing. So what is the main color you see? Well, the main color I see is green. I see, mm, I'm gonna wipe this up. I don't see any yellow, so I'm gonna wipe that up. Um, 
mean, the main color I see in the glass is like a greenish blue, and I actually have the perfect color on my palette, which is Green Earth Terre Verte um, by Winsor Newton. It's perfect. I love this paint. It's so pretty. I always have this on my palette. So I can use that, but I also see some gray. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take some of this and and put it into this blue over here that I used for the cornflower. And I'm just gonna touch it with a little bit of orange. I have a, here a transparent orange, or I could use burnt sienna, cadmium orange, because the opposite of blue is orange. So that makes gray. And really between those two colors, I can, I can paint my glass, all right? So I'm gonna start with, um, with this and just sort of paint it in where I see it. Uh, I see it like in there, right? Um, maybe a little bit back here at the bottom edge. And we don't have to do too much, okay? All right, and I see it back here in the water. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna take my brush I'm, I'm gonna be careful that I don't touch the white of the flower. And everywhere else I could just paint this. All right, so it's kind of like, kind of like that. And then it comes down to here and I've got green and gray. So I can put it in there and then grab my gray, which I see down here. And just paint it where you see it, right? And then take water and just fill it in with just some clean water, right? Super simple. Does it need to be darker somewhere? Then I add a little bit more, right? And I can take a clean brush and I can wipe out a little bit of light if I need to. But the key is keep it really simple. And then up here, I take my gray, it's different from the green, and I just really lightly fill that in, staying away from the white flowers. Keep it simple, okay? Um, Now underneath, I wanna put a little bit of a shadow and I'm gonna use the same colors. I'm gonna start with the green and just kind of surround my glass. I'm gonna leave a little bit of light here because you see that there. I'm gonna take some gray, spill it onto the paper, and then I'm gonna use water and just sort of push into the edges like that and I can wipe off this little area of light and just soften it all. So there's just a little bit of a shadow on the table. I can take more color and drop it in in the areas that feel darker to me. You don't need too much, all right? And that is just a super enjoyable, precious little painting that you can send in the mail as a postcard or give as a birthday card. It's just, or you could put it in your kitchen to make you smile every day, right? Very, very sweet. All right, so we'll put this one aside. And now I'm gonna do one a la prima. Which means that I'm not, I'm not going I'm not going to um, draw anything. I'm just gonna paint. And I'm gonna start with my, I'm gonna start with my, um, my glass this time. See how that goes. Remember, we're learning. We wanna sort of stretch ourselves. All right, so I'm gonna start here and just sort of paint, paint what I see. Okay. 
Okay. And over there, I'm going to mix it with some gray and pull it down. And then leave some white here and maybe a little bit more gray. Keep it really simple. All right. Push some light into it. Maybe a little bit of a darker area. And this will kind of be hidden with that flower. Lift up some. And I'm going to go ahead. gray, more of that shadow color. Let's do, where's my orange? Come down here and, and uh, get a little light leaking happening. very whoops I bet you I'm out of the frame that's the problem I I just never have a big enough space okay okay and then I can take a tissue and just sort of blot on the edges so it's so it's sort of diffuse and then I always want to go back and I can define anything that needs to be defined right and this, as it dries, we can, we can add more or less or whatever. So now I'm gonna come up here with my yellow and I'm gonna start painting my little flowers. And I'm just seeing where I see them. This one's right on the rim so I can kind of scrub that out and add add my yellow and I'm going to take some warm yellow and add it in so I started with cool yellow this time I'm not really mixing too much I'm trying to paint as directly as possible okay and then I'm going to take some yellow and add it here and put a little bit of violet in it to make that darker color that I see. And I've got gray, so I can, I can pretend little gray petals on my flowers. Just be very loosey-goosey with these.
corn flour. Go back to that cobalt. And my corn flour, right in here and I'm just gonna try to get those shapes And then I'm going to add my pink so I get a violet in the center of that flower. And then quinacridone rose can give me my little shapes of clover. Remember, we're doing this all prima, so things are gonna run into each other and mix and mingle. And if you don't like it, you can take a drier brush and manipulate it a little bit. Then I can take a little bit of green, put it into my raspberry color, my quinacridone rose, and get that, that darker color that I could drop in. All right, and then I'm gonna go right to the green. I'm gonna take sap green. Maybe even take a little bit of my yellow that I was using. Stick it in there and start thinking about my very delicate. Okay, now remember we've got this in here that we've gotta think about being subdued. So I have a tissue and I just blot it. And you can do, you can do a couple at a time. Oh, that one went too far. Um, and then blot. Lightly blot. We're gonna go. We're gonna go over it again. So just keep. Just keep going. You don't want to. You don't want to stop. You just want to keep painting. Very loose. Lot our stems. Okay, then go back to our glass color. Right? Put a little bit more paint in. Then I'm going to take a little bit more green, make sure this is blotted. Just blot them a little bit so it's very muted. And 
And then we've got our watercolor in the background here. Take some of this darker color and drop it into my wrap, my my little clovers, and some of the brighter pink can go right on top. And I'm just having fun. I'm playing. And then I see a little bit of darker color around the side of this, so I'm just gonna add that in, just so it, there, emphasizes that a little bit. And just always when we're doing we're working this way we just kind of want to blot so it's never that like distinct it's just kind of loose okay so that's another way to approach this and the looser I am the less worried I am about things looking a certain way the happier I am with the results this is not the kind of painting where we're painstakingly trying to paint each petal. The looser we are, the freer we are, I think the more charming the painting becomes. Um, let me just take a little bit of gray here. I'm gonna add to some of those petals. Voila. Do I need more shadow? I could. I could put a little bit more gray here. And then just let it... This paper isn't bad for, for playing. Um, it's not bad. It's not great either. Um, like the paint sometimes will sit on top of it a little bit. All right, that's it. I hope you have fun with this. Use your reference, be free and loose, and just keep, like with the first one, the key is your ink drawing and everything else can be really loose and fresh after that, right? But even keep the ink drawing a little bit like you're using your non-dominant hand. You could even try it with your non-dominant hand. The point is, is you don't want to get too specific and controlled, right? You want it to look sketchy and free. Like you just dashed it off. And this one, the key is to keep working, to let the colors mix and mingle, and then to go on top and to have a tissue there that you can blot a little bit if you need to. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoy this. And I will see you Friday with the dandelion lesson. All right, take care.